Howdy, y'all. Hello. <laughs> Happy New Year. It's January, mid-January 2020, and we have uh, a project to get going today. Actually, I was supposed to have done this probably two months ago, but things happen. But today, we are going to be planting a whole lot of bulbs, and I want to show you some different methods for planting, and I'm going to explain everything we're putting in and what it looks like, how tall it gets, and all that good jazz. Are you ready to help me with planting? You're going to do the planting. I'll do the digging. Okay. I kind of haven't told you how many bulbs we have. Well, out of all the pictures I've seen, I think there might be a few. Yeah, there's a few. But be sweet to me because I'm getting over a cold. So you can't complain. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Come along for the ride. Let's get her done. First up is the easy stuff. I'm going to plant in these pots right here, these concrete planters on either side of our little entrance. Um, I had ordered some daffodils, which, you know, grow great here in the south, but this is a different variety than I've ever ordered before, and I wanted to see how it was going to do. So I only ordered like 25 bulbs. It's called Early Cheer. Here's an image of it. They only grow about 10, 12, 14 inches tall. And even though, uh, despite their name, early cheer, they're actually a mid-season bloomer. And they are considered an heirloom uh, pre-1934, developed in New Zealand. But they're supposed to, like I said, they're supposed to grow well in the south and on the west coast, but they might not do well in colder climates, so you would have to remove the bulbs. But I'm going to try them out in these planters and see how they do. They are double bloomers, but they actually have like 6 to 12 blooms per stem. So I think they're going to be quite gorgeous. Now I'm supposed to plant them about 6 inches deep, which is just about the depth of, this, of these planters. So we'll just see how they do. The first thing I always do in planting bulbs after you have your hole started is to put the fertilizer in. And I like to use Espoma uh, bulb and flower food. So, to come a little closer, I'll show you how I'm going to get these all planted up. So, first things, I'm going to put some fertilizer in. Get that mixed up. Now, in planters, you can cluster any bulb, really, um, close together. You don't have to worry about the spacing that it recommends. So, actually, when you plant bulbs, you want to plant the pointy end up. That's where it's going to flower. So I'm just going to space these out. Here's the root. Now I know I have 12 per planter. That looks pretty good. So now we're just going to cover it up with some potting mix. Now, I will want to water this in, and once they start to sprout, they need to be watered at least once a week or every uh, five days or so if, you're, if you don't get any rain for three or five days. Now I want to show you what I'm going to add to give just a little bit more emphasis. 
As soon as spring rolls around, I will probably plant something uh, along the perimeter just to give some additional drapey interest. I always love Creeping Jenny. Um, ivy works. So at that point in time, when we know cold weather is over, even though I'm wearing short sleeves in mid-January, I will wait until then to do that. But these are pretty short planters. And so to give some additional interest, I have these wonderful looking things i don't know what you call it obelisk i don't know but i'm thinking that just adding them in here now i know i planted a bulb right in the center and it's probably going to have to grow around that And I may need to put a couple of little stakes or something down in there. But I think it would be really pretty once these grow because they only get, like I said, between 10, 12, 14 inches tall. So they should be all in here with this around it. What y'all think? I'll do the other one and then we'll move on to the next step. Next up is uh, something that kind of doesn't even look like a bowl, but it's foxglove, Excelsior foxglove. They get, this is a mixed variety, so there'll be different colors, and they're going to get anywhere from four to six feet tall. If you want to, you can actually cut the flowers and dry them, use them in arrangements, but if you leave them, uh, alone and don't cut them they will self seed so out in this area in front of our property where there's kind of like nothing but rocks and hard clay we're going to attempt to see if we can get these to grow I have five bags and there's four in a bag so we're just going to kind of space it out here and put all four in one hole five holes so we'll see how it does all right, folks, this is a tool right here. It's called Root Assassin. If you got small stuff to dig, it's really great, especially in rooted areas. But nevertheless, it's still a shovel. It does require work. Okay. And when we ride in the pumpkin, we have to share. Cooper Doop always gets on. Aren't you cute? Want to drive? Next up, I'm going to be planting some things in the center of these two corners that have the pampas grass. Uh, and every couple of winters, we burned down the pampas grass. Of course, we had huge, huge rain last night. So this is actually a good time to burn it. They will come back more lush, more green by burning them. So as soon as these are done, this one over here too. These were a little wetter, so they're not burning as well. But we'll go on to planting the next item and show you a special thing we need to do because of our problem with chipmunks and moles. Having the right tools is everything. And if you're going to be planting hundreds of bulbs like we are, this is the thing to have. It is a plant auger. It's 24 inches long. It has a 3 8 inch hex nut for, or hex, whatever you call it for attaching. And it's the Mac Daddy. In this area, we have a lot of rock, but I just want to show you how easy it is even for me to do. Now, with a drill, you need a good drill, which this is one. It's a 20-volt DeWalt, battery-powered, but you need to have a handle because if you do happen to catch a rock or a weed, you don't want it kicking you. But let me show you how easy it is to use it. Uh, 
amazing. I don't have on my mic. It's a little hard to do with it on, so I'll talk loud. Now, in these holes for these uh, gladiator alliums, they need to be a uh, good six to eight inches deep. And again, I'm going to put uh, the bulb tone down in the bottom of each hole. Now, I mentioned about the moles. One of the things you can do, especially if you have large, expensive bulbs like these alliums are, is individually wrap them in chicken wire. So that's what we've done here. This will keep the moles from getting to the bulbs. So that's really it. Again, make sure you got root side down, pointy side up, although these don't really look very pointy. So you really kind of need to just look for the root and shove it down in there. So we'll get all these planted on this side and the other, and then I'm gonna show you another method using chicken wire when you're doing more of a mass planting. Out of sight, out of mind, maybe? Let's hope so.